Rico, you first have to like my page, the Goa Antique Glass and Stoneware Bottle Collectors Club. Great. So I will definitely do that. Uh, but I want to introduce uh, the listener to Francis Barneto, who many of us know at many different levels, especially the people from in and around Saligao and Sangye. But tell us about your fascination with bottles and your work in collecting bottles from different parts of Goa and across different points of history. See, uh, I started collecting bottles, just uh, the blue bottles because they look nice. Then I started collecting garafas because I used to store Feni in them. Which years? Um, maybe about 10 years since now. So now my collection is almost about 6,000 bottles. Wow. And... Uh, then it just went on, and uh, uh, I have bought got bottles which are from 1700, wow. and one is uh, uh, a Roman amphora which uh, I'm still not, it's not certified, but it is of that class, so that's the oldest one, uh, and I have various types of bottles, case gins, mm, free blown, uh, pontal marked, and your different categories of bottles. Yeah. Yeah, so so that's fascinating uh, because, you know, you've gone into such depth into collecting it. And very often uh, when you specialize in one such niche area, it, it is, uh, it's quite challenging to do as much as you can. But can you tell us where you found these bottles? What is the state of, uh, you know, bottles in Goa today? How, how See, where are people? I started my collection from my backyard in my go-down. And then, uh, you know, scrapyards antique shops, friends, mm, old excavations. Wow. But actually, Francis, uh, this if you don't know what it is, it's crap. And if you yeah. know what it is, then it is a valuable thing. Yeah. At one time, it was always crap. Now, mm, people have gone on the net, and, and if you just click bottles, antique bottles, you'll be shocked to see what you find there. And the rates will really mm, shock you. So, for instance, you mentioned some names, which, uh, sorry to say, don't mean much to me. But how old are they? What is the antiquity? Yeah. Where are they coming from? See, the old, oldest bottles are free-blown, meaning they were just, uh, a pontel was uh, stuck into the molten glass and they blew into it. And a sh uh, odd-shaped bottle came. Then they started case-molding that bottle. Then those were called case-mold. Then they started rolling them. Then the, the uh, three-piece bottles came in. Then uh, slowly the full seam bottle came, which was machine-made. And, and from 1920, uh, almost all bottles are machine-made with a full seam, two-piece. You know. How old are your oldest bottles? My oldest bottles are Dutch case gins, which are 1700. From Goa? No, no, no bottles were made in Goa or India. They were all imported Imported. from, but from Holland. Yeah, from yeah, in Goa. They were used in Goa. So Goa is an amazing place because it was this kind of globalized market where things came from all over. So so where all do you have bottles from? You have bottles from all over India, uh, starting from Roman. The Romans who came here 2,000 years ago brought uh, bottles. Any in your collection? I have one, but it's not certified. So I can't say, but, but the... Uh, structure of the bottle and the patina on it and the wear on it says it's a Roman amphora. Wow. So how long, how much time do you spend on this hobby? Uh, as much time as I can get. Do you believe in this 10,000 hour rule? They say if you spend 10,000 hours, you can become an expert on anything. Yeah, probably. So, so you know, uh, when it comes to these bottles, like uh, what's your next step? You were talking about a bottle museum. Yeah. First, I'm going to have it all documented catalogued and documented with explanation of what type of bottle it is, what it was used for, when they were brought, who made them. And and most of this stuff is available on catalogs and all, but a general person, he doesn't know uh, anything about bottles and not bothered to go into a catalog before seeing your museum. After seeing your museum, he gets interested and he goes into his backyard, starts to collect bottles, and then his collection starts and then he becomes interested in it. Because I know many people have come and seen my collection and the next thing I know is that they're inviting me to see theirs in their home which they pulled out from their cupboards and so is it a costly hobby uh, well if you start collecting rare it see any hobby depends on the rarity and your budget now if you're going in for rare bottles like you know uh, old uh, ships bottles and all they are um, very costly and uh, if you're going in for regular 
bottles or if you can have selective collection like blue bottles or uh, gin bottles stoneware you know so it depends what type of collection you What's want to make stoneware? stoneware is a, a kind of a china clay uh, bottle you know like a, a glazed or unglazed uh, you know like the bottles that we use for make uh, to keep uh, pickles you know it's something like that as far as the average uh, person in goa would concern would be concerned people like me what would they recognize about the bottles the only unusual bottles i remember are the soda bottle uh, yeah, bottles cord with the soda sorry cord soda cord soda hmm. with with the marble and you yeah. push the marble and yeah it. so you can uh, uh, depending on what fascinates you you start your collection you can have cord soda bottle no, collections what's there in goa which uh, people would remember from another era soda bottle will be the most uh, popular thing with people from the uh, last uh, you know 70s, 70s and 80s you know last was the 80s when before uh, plastic bottles came in the soda bottle was still around all the limbu soda guys used that yeah. they made the sodas at home it cost them a five paisa or something uh, and then they made your sodas then the uh, you know the slowly that thing died down and but that was the first that novelty bottle were the were the portuguese beer bottles or what no beer bottles portuguese no. portuguese garrafas garrafas the wine wine jars which are still around which are still around but in few, few yeah the, the the numbers are dropping and and if people like me keep collecting them then the numbers will drop more no no but i i think you're being unfair to yourself because we are, i mean you're also building a certain appreciation of our sense of history and yeah. and continuity so i have uh, the garfans a uh, huge number of them various types of them different shapes different shapes different sizes different colors so the garfan basically i was about to ask is a green bottle covered with a wicker with the wicker part of it is not uh, really the bottle but the structure of the bottle whether it's pontal marked sheared top there are different categories of bottle of different age made free blown they are all made in europe somewhere in europe you know depends on what bottle you have it's made in one part of the world i see so uh, in goa especially our bottles are european only somewhere around in the uh, 50s early 50s and uh, 40s american bottles were coming in but american bottles started only in 1700 so america doesn't have a bottle history okay. like europe okay there are also bottles that were brought in by uh, the arabs yeah you know Uh, from uh, turkey and from persia do you have any i almost had one but uh, I, i missed it but i will i will have one hmm. so so in a sense uh, you know the bottles are an excuse for understanding our history for understanding global links for understanding the past see a bottle is a historical artifact it can if you a person who studied bottles one look at a bottle and he knows how old it is what it was used for where it came from so it is an artifact the first is a coin first of course is a skeleton next are coins and then are bottles because right from the roman time 2000 years ago bottles have been used when i say bottle is not necessary always glass it could be stoneware clay various forms coming back to the bottles in goa i remember uh, you know these wine bottles and also tiny bottles with uh, you know liquor in them and miniatures yeah yeah miniatures were something that was made uh, as a, a, a promotional bottle it, it was not really uh, you know uh, not storage it was not really something that people bought home unless they were going on a holiday and took two bottles along with them it is a peg i think 60 ml but uh, otherwise those are miniatures are just for a person to try out a drink but otherwise it's like a uh, uh, half bottle quarter bottle quart half full bottle okay that's the portugal story. was not a great uh, bottle maker i don't think so i managed to visit some glass blowing factory in sweden mm. while uh, holland is like the oldest holland. the la- oldest bottles we have are dutch bottles in goa in goa what bottles are these there are uh, bukers shydam uh, there are many uh, companies but bukers is like uh, the oldest that we have and uh, all over the world i suppose they are the oldest in your collection what would be i i don't want any robbers to come over but what would be the range price range or the worth of the bottles lowest to highest see what happens you know a thief can come and rob anything he wants but in terms of volume of he will have to carry 
very when tough. he robs. <laughs> he has to go away with the on very he, food. Huh. So it's not going to be an easy thing to rob your whole collection. But maybe a bottle or two he would. But then you're not going to stop making a collection because someone will yeah. one day rob your things. So you what's know? the worth? I, I don't know. You'll have to get the a... Costliest, like the costliest would be maybe four or five thousand. Uh, which year? Seventeen hundred. Those are those are glass bottles with uh, stamps on them, glass stamps. Wow. Francis, there was a time when, uh, you know, in the Mapsa market in Panjim, certain antique shops, they would sell coins, Portuguese coins, Portuguese notes, very cheap. Yeah. Those times are gone. Now, a Portuguese note is like nothing less than 20 to 25,000 rupees really? each. Yeah. Really? If, not the Scudos. Scudos is still about five to 10,000 rupees, but the rupias. Uh, 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 in the range of ten to twenty-five thousand for the uh, one rupee, two, ru uh, five rupees, ten rupees. But if you are going in for the really old ones, they are almost a lakh or maybe more. And these uh, coins, the very misshapen coins, where were they from? And they are from Goa. The Goa coin. All over the world, they were hand struck. You know, they a piece of silver was kept and a punch was uh, hammered onto it, punch okay. marked. Okay. They were called punch mark coins. So there were no dies. There were not m not too many. The Romans and all had die cast, but otherwise they were punch marked. Till finally the machines came and started machine striking them with the uh, security rims and all features on them. Your anti forgery features. You are an amazing person because you you've learnt all this yourself, and there are no some places to learn it from. No mentors. What would you say is the state of uh, Goa's awareness of its own history? You know. Now it's it's uh, going uh, very fast. People are becoming aware, and they see other people's hobbies and what they do, and then they want to start. They get interested, which is a good thing. You know, it keeps a person off these computers and uh, uh, computer games and things. You know, uh, and watching movies all the time. It gives you something to do. Instead of being passive uh, consumers of information, you're producing knowledge. Yeah. So a hobbyist, actually a hobby is, in a, is a kind of uh, obsessive compulsive, but it's a good form of obsessive compulsive. <laughs> but uh, mm, uh, in, in, in terms of becoming knowledgeable for yourself and others, it's a good thing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a hobby. Any hobby should be a hobby of appreciating nature. One day you can sell your hobby collection and you'll get something for it. Watching movies, I don't know how much of appreciation you'll get from that. And I just wanted to last push you on this bottle museum thing. Where would it be and, and uh, what are the plans? See, considering now that I have so many thousands of bottles, one day I will hope to make a small museum. You better do. I already have my bottles all uh, racked and kept up. Uh, and friends who come see them and they appreciate them. And some probably think of pinching a few, <laughs> but uh, this is not going to be so easy. But uh, I like that people should see them and, and appreciate and keep them because a lot of people just throw them out and then they said, oh, you know, we had so many of these in our go down. We just threw them out. and That's a shame. Thank you. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. I know you are in a hurry today, but you spent your time and you share your knowledge, which is even more important. And I'll put it out and pass it on to anyone else. Thanks so much.